In my honest opinion, this could quite possibly be the most slept on Air Force One. Perfect. Hello there broskies, Erkin back here with another video and this time we're back to business in terms of reviewing a sneaker. We are of course having a look at the brand spanking new Nike Air Force One Flyknit Crater. Now I have received tons and tons of questions from my subscribers in terms of this silhouette. Not particularly the crater version, but the Flyknit Air Force One. But hey, they're finally here. There is a little bit of a difference in terms of this actual silhouette. And we will touch on the differences between the actual Flyknit 2.0s and of course this version. And without further ado, let's start with the box. Now it does come in a somewhat different Nike box. It is the move to zero initiative type box we have here. Now I would have said new style box, but we are kind of getting used to this box now, especially because Nike are using a lot more recycled materials in their new silhouettes. And this is the latest Air Force One to come under it. Now Nike claim that this sneaker does use at least 20% recycled material. And judging by how some of the panels do look, I can actually vouch for it. But the product sticker on the side does read, Nike Air Force One Crater Flyknit. And the official colorway is black, black, and cambrai blue. Cambrai? Chambray? Combray? Chambray? Now we saw last year the Vapor Max Flyknit get in this move to zero style. And amongst other things, it did put a lot of people off. But does it change this Air Force One Flyknit that much? And if I'm comparing it to the Flyknit 2.0s, I can actually say no. Yes, some of the panels do look and feel different, such as the midsole and outsole. But overall, in terms of the on-foot experience, there isn't really much difference. Now, I do actually own four pairs of Flyknit 2.0s, and they are by far my favorite Air Force One. I've got them in white, I've got them in a rare orange color, Colorway, I got them in a red and black colorway and a black and white. And if I had to choose my favorite out of the lot, it probably would be the orange color. It's just so unique and very eye catching. And to be fair, the Flyknit Air Force Ones are most likely my go to summer sneaker. Yes, I might squeeze in an Air Max 90 and Air Max 95 in here and there, maybe even a Jordan 1. But the Air Force One Flyknits, they're so breathable, they're so comfortable, and they're very, very light. And this Flyknit Crater version ticks all those boxes. Now these did release here in the UK on the 13th of May this year and for a low retail price at £95. And a little shameless plug, I will leave a purchase link down below for you guys to purchase at the latest price. All right, we've spoken a lot already and I mean a lot, but let's take an even closer look at this sneaker. Now in terms of its design, it is a very traditional setup to the Air Force One, just in terms of the placements to everything. There are some versions like the Nike Reacts where they've enlarged the swoosh for example, and of course included a massive insole. But this sneaker does keep it more simple. Now of course we've got the Flyknit material on the upper, which contributes to how breathable this sneaker actually is. Again, if I am comparing it to the Flyknit 2.0s, there isn't really much difference if I'm totally honest. If I am nitpicking very slightly, it's got a little bit of a rougher feel to the texture. But you can't really tell that much, especially on foot. The only standout thing for me that I did notice straight away was some of the panels were a different color to the others. Such as the toe box, it's got that navy look to it and of course the mid panels just underneath the Nike swoosh. But other than that, the upper materials are more so black. Now speaking of the Nike swooshes, they are of that soft suede material that runs right back to the heel tab at the back. And we've got that same materials on the eyelet as well. Now something that has slightly changed compared to the Flyknit 2.0s for example, is these chunky, chunky laces. We've got that nice subtle Nike tab at the bottom that you would have on a normal Air Force One. And it does look like the same material on the upper is on the tongue as well. But finishing up on the tongue, we've got the Nike Air Force One branding on the top. On the sock liner, we've got that same color, but on the insole is where it changes it a little bit. It's got that standout green 
green color that we all know and love from the move to zero initiative with the nike move to zero symbol in black now i have mentioned it earlier it is standard at the back with that nike air branding in that same material as the nike swooshes but where things really take a big turn is of course the mid and outsole and it does consist of that nike grind material which is of course recycled and one thing that does also stand out is the use of the starred panels on the front and the back now i don't know if it's just me and please comment down below if you see this as well but the midsole it just looks like there's cashew nuts or peanuts in the midsole and someone's forgot to take them out that nike grind material it's not the most appeasing thing to look at but i guess it'll do it'll do right there we have it an up close personal look at this air force one crater flyknit but like we always do we have to have a look to see whether these are a buy or a buy now be now be i can't speak bro i've got dehydrated mouth and i don't want to drink water why is the logic there no it's not now me being such a fan of the Flynet 2.0s, there was a lot of high expectations. And a lot of the leaked images, I've got to say some of these colorways, <sighs> call these a Capri Sun because these are looking juicy. Oh no, no, I can't even put that in. Bruh, that was, that was terrible. That... Now from a personal standpoint, I think the Nike Move to Zero initiative is something you just have to get used to. Yes, it does help the environment so, so much. But some of the quality on these recycled sneakers, they're a bit iffy if I'm being honest. And the standout one to me is of course that Vapormax 2020 Flyknit we had last year. Some of the panels on that sneaker were very, very lackluster. But granted, some other colorways that come out after that, they did fix a few of the problems. So there is hope for the Move to Zero program. And if you've already got the Flyknit 2.0s and you're sort of on the fence with these, I would say save your money. But if you missed out on the 2.0s, then get these all day honestly there isn't much difference yes the look and design does slightly vary because of the nike grind midsole but in terms of how they feel and how comfortable they are then these are an absolute gem so of course overall i am going to give these a buy but anyways broskies thank you for watching as always don't forget hit me up on ig as well if you want to ask any questions then of course that is the place to do so and don't forget to like subscribe comment and share and of course, until the next episode, take care.